All right, we're here in Kennel Talk today with uh, Chris and Leah, and they run uh, First Point Kennel out of the Phoenix area. Chris, you guys want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your kennel? Uh, my name is Chris. Uh, kennel's just kind of getting started. Randy being our mentor. And uh, this is my wife, Leah. Hello. Uh, we actually started because we had a pointer that we fell in love with. Um, he's fixed, as most of our dogs have always been. This is Copper. And uh, we helped a friend out with one of their pointers, and that introduced us to Randy. Um, and it made us realize that this is a breed that we wanted to introduce to more people. So that's when we started uh, First Point Gun Dogs. What are some of the other breeds you have? Oh, wow. Over time? <laughs> um, I used to breed Beagles and Great Danes. Um, right now, we also have a Miniature Dachshund, a Terrier, a German Shepherd, and a Weimaraner. A Weimer armor. How does a short hair compare to those? What's uh, some of the differences? Strong points or weak points? Um, the pointer is very comparable to the Weimariner, other than the Weimariners are very territorial. Um, he's attached to me, so if anyone comes anywhere near me, uh, he can get very protective and has actually attacked people before. And we didn't want that in dogs. We wanted a family friendly dog um, that we could work because Chris had started hunting and it worked really well with him. Uh, the so as far as the German short hairs go, what are your what are your plans? What are your goals? Tell us about the dogs you have now. What you guys are going to do? Um, well, so being a military veteran, uh, police officer, some of my goals are obviously to provide uh, dogs that can be used as therapy dogs, similar to what Desert Point does in helping vets and first responders, um, and then also obviously supplying hunting dogs to people that want them. Uh, right now we have seven pointers, seven German short hairs. So my goal would be uh, 11 total with Copper who's fixed and not part of the breeding program. Okay, what are some of the characteristics of the dogs you want to breed? I'm a therapist. Um, I do crisis therapy and having dogs that I know we can work as well as possibly train some of those puppies to be actual therapy dogs for people. Um, so I want a dog that um, as a puppy shows me that they want to be on bird, they want to go and they hunt, they're interested in smelling and sniffing and showing me what they found and bringing stuff back to me. Um, but at the same time, I want a lap dog, which is exactly what a pointer is. They're Velcro dogs across the board, and that's one of the things we love about them. So I want that puppy to be able to get in my lap and hug and kiss me and make me feel better and then get out with him and go hunt birds. How about water work and retrieve? Oh, yeah, they, you know, Copper's a... Uh uh, water dog at heart <clears throat> when he was little he uh, 10 weeks old was already jumping in the pool and now to this day at five he'll actually retrieve stuff off the bottom of a pool but he'll go in the lakes and everything and I did they definitely need to be strong swimmers be able to retrieve uh, naturally and not afraid of the water at all because you know you anytime you're out you're going to come across water in, in most places and we found I mean we've had one who was a slapper where when he went out he just kind of slapped at the water and didn't swim and we found that all we had to do was work with getting his butt up and he's a, an amazing swimmer now he cheats he swims all the way out before we throw it but he swims straight so tell us about the dogs that you have right now who are they um we have we have a dog that we call pig his name is wrigley um but he answers to pig pig and he is probably by far our best hunter um we got him here he's a desert point dog got him at seven months and he will hunt, he will point, he will retrieve, he will get in the water. Uh, we have Oliver who is a goofy dog but he's big. He's about almost 90 pounds now and he uh, so so at the pointing so far we're still working on that but he will retrieve and he's our best water dog. He gets in there we've actually retrieved duck for him or he's retrieved duck for us um, and then we have some littles. Uh, we have Reba who has found that we found that she's probably our best retriever. Um, any dog will go out and get something, she'll take it from him because she wants to bring it back to us. Uh, Rory. So who are they out of and what color are they? Oh. So Ollie, Ollie's Desert Point, uh, Scout and He's Holly. Holly and Scout and he's a, a liver, liver bone. bone. Um, Pig is liver and white with spots, ticked and spotted and he's out of Bejinx and Miss Charlie. Uh, Reva is Katie and Jack. Katie and Jack, and she's solid liver. 
And then Rory is going to be Jack. No. No, I'm sorry. Rory is Scout and Bonnie. And she's, she's Black Roan. Um, and yeah. then we have a dog that we got out of Nebraska. Um, Iowa, who's Iowa. Iowa picked up in Nebraska. Who's liver and white. Um, spotted. And... Am I missing That's anyone? it. That's it. And then Copper, who was just a backyard dog. And who are you adding? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I'm adding Richard, whose name will probably become Doug. <laughs> Jack and Sophie. Um, yeah, he's out of Jack and Sophie. He is a beautiful liver or black roan male who just looks like a hound, and he is a lover, which I love. Um, but he's already pointing, which I think is fabulous. Well, here's the thing. If you come to Desert Point Kennels, just be prepared to leave with three or four dogs. Because <laughs> you're going to fall in love with all of them. Every one of their dogs are uh, super loving dogs. They're family dogs, but they also hunt. They also swim. They run. Well, and uh, so every time we come here, we end up, I think, with at least one more from from one of his litters. And uh, they've been their best dogs. So. And we have found a dog, like I said, we've got a little girl that I love from our outside kennel, but... I like that I can come here and see the parents and interact with them and be able to pick, okay, this one was bred with this one and I know what I'm going to get out of them. I know that from Scout and Holly, I got this phenomenal dog who is, he's my dog and he's going to be a great therapy dog and that's Oliver. Um, but I can see those parents to be able to see those traits. Randy, uh, you do the most research, I think, on your dogs and, and testing and, and actually training them and making sure they're the right fit and that your dogs are actually very versatile so that's what's also beneficial is you have so much uh, documentation on your dogs that it's it's very easy to look back and see what kind of dog you're going to get and what kind of dogs yours is going to produce mm -hmm. how about dan dan going home with you guys i'm taking dan if you're letting dan go i'm taking dan <laughs> if you're letting dan go dan is coming home with us even though he peed on my leg yeah dan peed on her today he, marked he claimed her. me that's it he's coming home with me wow big dan the man so your goal as far as short hairs are how many? Our goal is 10 breedable short hairs, six, women, six girls, four boys. Why so many boys and so many girls? Um, I've been really careful about picking who parents are back and forth to make sure that they're breedable with each other. Um, I want dogs that don't have any familial connection whatsoever for anybody who has concerns about line breeding, um, but I am a believer in breeding lines into it. I love Jack. Jack is probably one of my favorite dogs that you have, same with Chris, and putting his lines back in through our puppies and making sure that he's bred into those puppies is one of the things that was important with us. So we picked puppies that had Jack in the background. In a pretty good sized breeding program, which obviously you're going to have, what's the advantages of having more dogs versus maybe just a pair of dogs? You can get multiple different personalities out of your puppies. You're going to get different traits from each dog, and so you can pick like this litter is going to be a good family dog litter and they'll hunt still but they're going to be more of a loving dog and you get some guys that just want a dog that wants to work and hunt all the time and then just wants to go to sleep at the end of the day and you'll get that with some dogs too depending on how you pair them up but you can't do that if you don't have the variety. A, a variety of dogs and personalities and uh, so we can build you know and try to breed different litters that are suitable for different things so one one sire and one dam mm -hmm. doesn't quite give you much flexibility it's you're going to get the same same litter before. each time i mean obviously each litter is going to have a that rare puppy or a couple of them that may be super driven to hunt but you're kind of going to get the same personality out of every one of them out of each litter um, it's not always a bad thing but you just if you're trying to produce dogs for different reasons it's tough to do that how about colors? Any color preferences? Oh yeah, well my preference is black roan. I love the black roan dogs. Um, but we wanted to make sure that we had dogs that when we bred to each other that we had varieties because not everybody likes the black roan. Um, he likes the solid liver, but we don't just want solid liver and black roan dogs. So the way that you're set up, you have, did you mention Heidi? Oh, you know, oh my we goodness, forgot that's Heidi. why I was forgetting was Heidi. I have a solid She's black. always quiet and, and, she and gentle, is, uh, so we forget about her. She's Sophie and Buck. So solid German dog. Yeah, she's solid, solid German. So you have... She's actually probably our second strongest swimmer to Copper. She'll actually, she started diving to the bottom of the pool recently, too, with Copper this summer. Um, she just started following him down, trying to get stuff up. <laughs> the pool. 
and uh, she's not afraid of anything. Mm -hmm. She, she, her points a, needs a little work. We're working on that, but she, she does. She points. She just doesn't point with a paw up. She did today. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she did. Nice well, you. I'm glad you got a picture. But she does. Uh, she definitely likes to run and track. Um, flush. She's got a lot of drive, but at the end of the day, that dog is so attached to me that she's. She just wants to lay like right here next to my head all the time. And, Look, but the second we get out, first thing she does is she's ready to run and hunt. So she's one of those versatile dogs that I was talking about where they're great family dogs, great cuddling, happy, you know, inside dogs. But when they're outside and ready to hunt, it's it, when it's time to work, they work. And we just heard some good news about her brother that's with a guide in Tucson. That that's his number one bird finding dog and great pointing. And so... We have good hope for her. So you have, so so we have a solid black, a solid liver. We have a liver and white, liver and roan, black and roan. I think the only thing we don't have is a black and white. Like yeah, Charlie. Yeah. yeah, that's. I think that's the only thing we won't have. That'll be coming up probably. Yeah, I'm figuring between Heidi and Pig, bringing the two of them together will give me a black. No, as far as health testing, what are you guys going to do? Anyone that hasn't been health that. You haven't health tested both parents on. We'll do full testing on. Um, and like our little girl that we got from out of state, I, I don't know that person, so even if he did have health testing done, she's going to have full health testing. Yeah, and they're pretty much, pretty much healthy. I mean, they're pretty healthy dogs. We haven't had any health problems with any of our dogs. What else do you think we need to cover? How'd you come up with the uh, name? You know, first point gun dogs? First point. Yeah, first point gun dogs, so being a first responder uh, was part of it. And then, uh, I mean, obviously, at the kennel that your dog's bred at, that's where they get their first point. So that's kind of it was kind of a mix of the two. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And do you have a website up that people can find you yet? She, she was supposed to get that started and taken <laughs> care of. And, uh, We're right in the middle of moving to a bigger property for the dogs. Because right now we only have a quarter of an acre. And so we're moving to two and a half acres and it's in the works but i had to put it on hold as we move in we move in the next month so, so two months we'll have it up in 60 days so this is early or mid-february 2020 2020 so we expect uh, great things from from chris and Leia in their program and they're dedicated and uh tell us about the time you spend with the dogs how, how does that work working and what do you so, do with the dogs? So I work day shift. Uh, so at the, obviously before I go to work, they're still asleep because I leave pretty early. Uh, but the, during the day, uh, our daughter's a college student and stays at home with them during the day. And, uh, you know, we just kind of run them in the backyard. And then after work, I run them outside a lot. And then on the weekends, they go, we find anywhere we can go to take them out. And if it's bird season, they hunt birds. If it's not, we let them chase rabbits. And... Uh, occasionally, uh, you know, obviously we come up here to, to Randy's place and he is kind enough to help work the dogs with us and train using uh, bird throwers or in pigeons sometimes. Uh, whatever whatever we can do to get work with them so that they stay, stay driven, stay focused and don't forget what they're, you know, supposed to do when they're out there. Which has been great because it's taught us how to do it. So now we finally have bird throwers and we have found a place locally to be able to get pigeons for them so we can keep working them even when we can't come down here. So the dogs are pretty important to you guys. Oh, yeah, our it's... dogs, our kids are older. I mean, our, our daughters are youngest, my boys are gone. Our dogs are our life. That's that's pretty much all we do on the weekends is spend time with the dogs or take them somewhere. I know you ran your uh, training up in the in the mountains this summer. And we, how many times? I think we came up there like <laughs> a lot of times. seven or eight times <laughs> to visit. Every other weekend we were up yeah, there. Yeah, every other weekend we were up there running the dogs with you and just to let them get work and be around your dogs because they actually learned a lot just running with your dogs in a group and as a pack. And um, your dogs have, you know, they that's the coolest thing about these pointers is I don't know that I've ever seen a real fight between any of them. Mm. It's pretty rare. They all just kind of get along all the time. Uh, even when it's a, just a random dog of somebody that would come up to visit you, they just they'd sniff it for a second, and they were all running like they'd known each other forever. So that's another good thing about this breed is they're pretty accepting of other dogs, other people. That's true. Now, being, I mean, law enforcement nowadays isn't like it was in the past, and you work for a big city, and at times that's pretty stressful. 
um, being able to come home to these dogs must no, that's be. the best thing in the world because mm -hmm. they just they don't care about anything but you so it's a uh, it's super important because they hey you come home and they just want to play and they don't they don't think about all that other stuff they don't know about that other stuff what's up Haley and they like to throw when you throw balls they, they absolutely love do. Balls. my dogs like tennis balls don't they yeah yeah, we do a lot of tennis ball retrieving just because it's good exercise for them and burning energy is very important in these dogs otherwise they they can become destructive if you don't if you don't focus their energy so when you we take these dogs home they need to make sure you take time with them and spend a lot of time getting them out there and getting them running and not just sitting around as much as they want to cuddle and love with you they still do need to they do have a lot of energy so my daughter has like literally a regiment for during the day when because i sleep during the day because i work graveyards and when he's at work, when I'm sleeping, she goes every single hour. They have something specific that they do to keep their energy out. And then when they're not doing that, they're inside. They're cuddling. They're she's working with them on therapy stuff. It's so what 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 do you say to someone getting a short hair? A family that's never had a German short hair before. Are you prepared to to walk your dog four times a day? Just do some research. Yeah. I mean, honestly, they needed to research the breed and know what it takes to uh, to work with these dogs because. They're not, uh, it's not just a little chihuahua that's going to sit in your lap all day and not need to run. They do need to play. They need time outside. They need, they, as much as they love you, they still need some, you got to give back to them as well. So they got a lot of strong points and they got a few weak points. How would you compare them? Everybody knows about Labradors. How do you compare them to a Labrador? A Labrador to me is a lazy dog after having German short hair pointers. We've, we had a lab. We did. Uh, I had a chocolate lab for a while and he was, or she was great. She played, she laid on the ground, she would play fetch. They won't run all day. No. Not like a pointer will, especially in Arizona in the desert. Uh, these are, The pointers are probably the toughest dogs I've seen next to a couple breeds of hounds that guys run for lion and bear and stuff. These dogs, their, their drive and their their stamina is an all day even in the heat they just need breaks for water and they're going to keep going uh, a lab's not going to run all day like that in the heat out here and in the desert and the cactus and it's made it so i'm much more of a nature person because i was much more of a i want a dog at home with me which is why i did great danes because they don't really do a whole lot of anything but he's got it so i camp all the time now because the dogs need that and we hike and my daughter walks all the dogs individually every single day. Every single one of our dogs gets walked just to make sure that they're outside around people, around other dogs. So you guys have made big investments. I mean, trailers and, mm -hmm. yep. and trucks and everything to do. And you're pretty unconventional, too. You don't have kennels. Everybody lives in the house somehow. All of our dogs live in our house. All of they're, our they're players all, sleep yeah, in our bed. They all allowed access to the house, outside, the pool. They, none of them are locked up at all ever. It's kind of good that he has a day shift and I have a graveyard shift <laughs> because the dogs do all sleep in our bed with us. <laughs> now, so Copper's the oldest. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about his progression as far as energy-wise from a puppy and how it is now, what people can expect at maybe different ages? Three. Three was the turning point for him. He was a puppy all the way until then. And it was something to get used to because, again, we didn't we didn't know what we were getting into when we got our first pointer, and he was very destructive. We learned none of our other dogs have been like that. Um, but once he turned three, he was much more of a letting us know what it is that he needed instead of just being destructive. He still he'll still run all day. All day. He'll still go run all day, swim all day. He non you know he How won't old is stop. He? He's almost six. He's yeah he'll be six this year. So how about the other, age-wise, what can people expect? If they get a dog from you, what... what Any you puppy think? is going to be like a puppy. Yeah. They're going to chew, they're going to bite, they're going to bite gonna your pee hands. in your house. you got to work with them. You see, and, and something that I've actually found with pointers versus another dog is they're so much easier to potty train. They really are. I, and I don't know why, I don't know what it is about the breed, but around 12 weeks, they are letting me know that they have to go outside. And we don't have a dog door because we have a pool. So all these dogs will let us know. They will bark. They will paw at the door. I've seen they some people use warning. bells on the doors. So smart to right. be able to learn to do that. This puppy that we picked up had two accidents in our house. And she's 12 weeks old. And, that's, and she goes and that's outside it. every time. She lets know. us know every single time. 
So you've had all these different kind of dogs. How smart are the short hairs compared? We had to change the doorknobs on our house. Because they started opening doors. <laughs> because uh, we actually have to put were... a lock on the ice machine on the fridge because mm -hmm. Oliver knows how to turn the ice on and so it all falls out. Yeah. So okay. they, they can have the ice. We have to remember that uh, it goes from water to ice. We have to keep it on ice just in case the lock doesn't work so it's not water that sprays out. Yeah. But our door, our door handles were the ones that they you They started getting into down. the pantries and getting in wherever they wanted to get because they're smart. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out where the smells are coming from. Our trash cans, we had to figure out a place outside side of the kitchen because before they were just freestanding in our kitchen and we've always had five dogs we've always each had our and own if, dog if i found too if you out. exercise these dogs they're they're easy to free feed you don't mm -hmm. have to regiment their feeding as long as they get the right amount of exercise every day they're still healthy and they none of them i don't have a single one that overeats mm -hmm. Uh, we don't free feed only because we have a couple other breeds of dogs. I have a German Shepherd as well that I had rescued at work, um, and he will eat a 50-pound bag of dog food if you leave it down for him. So we have to actually schedule our feedings, but we've taught the pointers that each one of them has a, a place that they eat in their dish, and then I open the gate, and they go right to their own dish. And they're, they're, they eat, they eat and, and then they walk in. right back out. You know, So they're, they're smart dogs. They're, if you put the time in, they'll, they'll pretty much do anything you teach them to do. I mean, so. so a lot of so I, I know you guys want to do therapy. Take them into old folks' home. Mm -hmm. Any fly ball, any dock diving, any. Anything I else have actually yeah. looked into the dock diving because a copper being such a water dog and Heidi being such a water dog. The only problem I've had so far is the days that they do it are days that I have to work. Okay. Currently, so it's a little bit tough being. Uh, well, we both work in industry, in fields where it's shift work, and our days off are never the same because we work in 24/7 jobs that never shut down. So it's made that part makes it difficult to do some of the events, but it's actually beneficial because when I want to go hunt, there's nobody out there on Tuesday during the day, and that's one of my days off. You know, or Wednesday um, when I go out quail hunting or dove hunting, or there's nobody else really to contend with. Because <laughs> in the middle of the week, everybody else is at work. So that, that's actually been beneficial for me. Do you guys have a Facebook just for the kennel yet? People could follow you? No, on? actually, I was going to talk to you about that this weekend, about whether or not that was benef you found that to be beneficial. Well, so. I mean, if you don't want people to be on your personal one and end up with 2,000 friends, that, you know, I mean, if you don't <laughs> mind don't that. Really but, yeah, I think, I think so, where people can, can follow you. Until the meantime, when you guys have litters, we, we will let every, everybody know and then when you get the website up we'll let people know so people can follow you and see mm -hmm. and see what you're doing I mean you guys are doing a, a great job I can't think of anybody that is do has our dogs that are doing you know um, uh, freedom gun dogs they are they're more well they're in the Phoenix area too so you guys are first point in their freedom and uh, they do a good job as well but you know, we have no problem, of course, in trusting our dogs to you guys. I know you guys are going to do good with the vets and good with the dogs, and maybe in another year we'll do another interview and see where we're at. See yeah, where you're at from there. So, <laughs> thank you very much, Chris, and thank you very much, Leah. No worries. Right, thank you.